In part three of my Tower Basics series, I'll finally start building and testing some towers. In the last part, we learned a little bit about the theory of buckling, and now we'll start to see if that theory holds true in practice. The high-speed camera will be a very important tool here, as it will allow us to see not only the exact moment of failure, but how that failure occurred. In this video, I'll be focusing on the first three towers in this picture. Because the tower rules for this season are not yet out, it made a lot of sense to demonstrate these design principles using a more simplified tower. I chose to build these at 25 centimeters tall and at roughly the same angle that worked well for the 2016-2017 rules. For reference, the tower heights historically have been 50 centimeters for division B and 60 centimeters for division C, but these mini towers work well for comparing the designs. To try and isolate just the design aspect of these builds, it is very important to remove the material variation between them. I cut up two entire sheets of balsa to get enough leg pieces to make sure each tower used identical mast pieces to each other. There is still some variation in the cross member pieces, but they were all cut from the same sheet, so they are generally the same. This is the first tower design I want to talk about. As many of you have probably guessed, this isn't a good design, but let's explore just how bad, and more importantly, explain why it's so bad. Here is my design notebook page for this build. I have blocked out the weight held and efficiency score to keep that as a surprise for later. For all of these builds, I used a single piece 3D printed assembly jig. I found that by taping the legs into place into the notched grooves in the jig, it made for an almost perfect assembly. I also like to work on an extremely flat surface like this large tile as shown here. Here you can see that the tower is 1.85 grams and it's almost perfectly level when set up on the testing stand. Before I show the video of the test, take a minute to think about how this tower might fail. Remember in part two of this series when I demonstrated buckling and how it becomes four times stronger for every halving of the length. Think of the four legs of this tower like the stick I was holding. This tower has five distinct levels that are five centimeters apart. That means each leg segment and thus the entire leg should be one over one fifth squared or 25 times stronger than the full length, right? Well, there is one critical thing missing from this design compared to what I demonstrated. Can you guess what it is? I'll explain during the high speed footage. We barely need the high speed camera to tell how this design failed. It held just 1.383 kilograms for a very poor efficiency of 748. It may be obvious to some to never build a tower like this, but I have actually seen designs like this in competition. It was a bit of a shock to me just how bad it was, especially compared to some of the future builds you'll see. Let's analyze exactly what is going on here. As you can tell, the entire structure is twisting. That is the key difference between what I demonstrated in the earlier video by holding the stick. By holding the stick with your fingers, you are essentially constraining the motion completely in the XY plane. Here, that is not the case, and what we've actually done is just tie the four legs together, but they are all still allowed to rotate freely in the horizontal plane. I'll freeze the video right before it breaks. You can see that each leg is buckling as if it were the same as the entire length. The horizontal cross members are not really doing anything at all to prevent that continuous buckling and is why this structure is so weak. This design is so bad it's pretty much the same as if you could build a tower with no cross bracing at all. In tower number two, let's see if we can improve on the previous design with the most minimal change possible. It uses the same number of cross members and spacing as the previous build, but this time we'll just angle them as shown. The angling of the cross bracing provides resistance to the rotation that caused the failure in the first build. You can imagine that if you try and twist this tower from the top, the load path follows around the tower from leg to leg and eventually is grounded to the bottom, which is what prevents the rotation. You can see from my notebook page that the final mass of 1.87 grams is almost identical to tower number one, but I predict the performance will be much better. Here's the tower being weighed just before testing, and again, you can see that the build is almost perfectly level. 
The 3D printed jig really helps with these tower builds, and I'm sure it will be important to have something similar when we build the real towers for next season. We're well into the live testing of this tower, and we can already tell it's significantly better than the first design. Okay, that wasn't great, but it was much, much better than the previous design. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened and how we might improve it for the next one. It held 6.384 kilograms for an efficiency score of 3,414. If you recall, the first tower's efficiency score was only 748. So this very simple design change increased our efficiency by a factor of over four and a half. That's a huge difference. Here I'll freeze the video right before the failure. You can see that one of the back lower cross members is failing. Not only do we have to worry about the legs buckling, but with everything else as well. The cross members in a design like this can either be in tension or compression, depending on which random way the legs decide to buckle. Because balsa wood is much stronger in tension than compression, we'll find that the primary failure mode we'll see in these cross members is buckling. In the next build, we'll explore what happens if we increase the overall cross bracing support by essentially combining the previous two designs to create a Z-shaped cross bracing pattern. As promised, here is tower number three, where I've combined the horizontal cross bracing of tower number one with the diagonal cross bracing of tower number two to create a Z pattern for the cross bracing. The spacing of every five centimeters is the same as before. It's not unheard of to see real life tower designs that look like this, so let's take a look and see how it performs. As you can see, it's a little bit heavier at 2.46 grams, but what we're interested in is efficiency. So let's see if the extra weight was worth it. I'll start the video at around seven kilograms to save some time. We can already see that this tower design is going to hold a lot more than the previous one. Will it hold enough to have a greater efficiency score? Let's see. It sure did. This design held 10.522 kilograms for an efficiency score of 4,277, or about 25% better than the previous design. Again, I'll freeze the video so we can see exactly which part started to fail first. This time, it was a lower diagonal cross member that started to buckle first. That is two designs in a row where the failure point was a long diagonal cross member buckling. It looks like we need to make those cross members stronger. So what should we do? We could increase the density or the size of those pieces, but if you remember, that will only increase the strength linearly. What if we could make those pieces half as long? That would increase their strength by a factor of four using the exact same material. It turns out there was a really easy design that does just that. As you might have guessed, if we make our cross bracing in the form of an X and glue the center point, it effectively makes those pieces half as long and four times stronger. The X design cross member towers will be the focus of the next video, where I'll show not only one form of that design, but take the next step to try and determine if the five centimeter spacing is ideal or not for these particular legs. Stay tuned for that, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.